production class. I think we still have it. I'm not quite sure what the status is of it. Is that where they do jiggers and jiggers? Jiggers and okay. trimming. And okay. I mean, there'd be days where you'd walk in for class Monday morning and they're like, we need 30, mi or 30 handles pulled first thing in the morning on Monday morning. Ugh, I hated that. Um, still don't like it, but... Um, but it did make me very, very proficient at pulling handles. So if you want to get really, really good at pulling handles or trimming or anything like that, just make a hundred of them. And by the time you get to 99, you think, ugh, I hate this. But you'll actually learn quite a bit about um, being able to make something and make something over and over. Uh, so then you can actually, uh, if you choose to go into uh, doing pottery, you can make a living a little bit easier if you can do it a little bit quicker. Uh, so you don't have to spend all day. Uh, I was going to say, by the, by the 99th, you probably figured out a few tricks to... Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and we'll actually, uh, we have those two mugs that I, I'll, I'll show you guys how I pull my handles and stuff. Um, I actually have started trimming a lot wetter. Um, and the reason why is I can push this clay around very easily. Uh, if it gets too dry, um, you're kind of stuck with whatever is there. Um, so by trimming wetter, you can push, you can add a little water, push that uh, flange in a little bit more, or um, not quite there. <laughs> now you were there under Bob Anderson? I was there for a year and a half under Bob. Okay. This is a WB. He was a WB. Uh, who retired. Yeah, he's, uh, he's still around. I still get to work with him, uh, which is cool because that guy, I've never seen anybody push through so much clay as he did mm -hmm. uh, in a very, very short period of time. Um, I mean, you'd sit down and he'd have like 30 mugs and you'd still be on three. Um, or he'd be making casseroles and he'd have like 20 casseroles in the time you have two. And it's just insane how uh, how quick and how uh, how good his touch was with clay. Have you guys started talking to yourselves yet uh, while you're throwing and stuff? All the time. Oh, good. Then I don't feel quite so uh, odd. I yell at the clay. I'm in here by myself at 3 a.m. That probably is not going to help much. Nope. Nope. Especially when you're cussing it out and there's guys next door. Who's next door? This is maintenance work. Oh. <laughs> crazy guy in the pottery room. Now oh, there he goes again. <laughs> so you have a rep now, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys kind of how I uh, throw my knobs. This might be a little bit soft again, but that's okay. So for my knobs, I throw them separate. I don't throw them all on the jar at once. Um, because uh, because they are so big, um, that'd be a lot of clay to trim out or uh, too much trimming that I don't want to do. So again, what I'll do is I'll just basically like I do on the... Um, on the, the big jar, I'll open it up all the way down to the bottom. And 
then pull it out to whatever sort of size I want. And I just close this thing off. That's a little bit too big. And when I'm pinching this thing off, I found that um, they're very, very susceptible to S cracks in the top there. And so when you're closing this thing off, instead of pushing that just together at the top, if you actually push it together right to that point and then twist it off, you'll have far less S cracks because um, it just kind of changes the, uh, the way those clay molecules are in there, I guess, or something. I don't know. But it works and I very crack very, very... I don't think I've ever cracked one of those big ones. Um, and I'll come in, I'll actually just kind of push this around a little bit, get it sort of the shape I want. And I've had these things called baby binkies and all sorts of different things. Um, they aren't actually anything at all. It's just a just a subtle little uh, lip or lid that I like on my jars. So people will see what they want to see uh, sometimes, and you just have to let them see whatever they want to see. Um, doesn't necessarily make them right. Doesn't necessarily make you wrong. Um, Once I've kind of chopped that thing off, it's just a hollow little piece. So then this, we can kind of see if we like it on there. If you're like, eh, it's too big, it's too small, it's too whatever, you can trash it, make another one, and then change it around a little bit. Um, so, if you don't like it, don't put it on there. Give myself a little guide. Pull that thing back up. Score that really well. Score this really well. And I'll just come in with my rib, kind of compress that uh, edge that I threw into the piece. And then come back into the top here. always come back in and you can trim it out a little bit like uh, because this has been pushed out a little bit unevenly. Just trim off the excess stuff that you don't like. thing that I do is just take your wooden knife and same thing as when I'm centering a piece on the wheel. Just come into the top and I push in on that seam right there 
Uh, that'll compress all that clay, so then you shouldn't have any issues with it cracking or opening up. And then if you push, no, oh, you push it down too far. If you if it's still too soft, like this is pretty soft right now, if you push down too hard, you may actually compress your uh, lid. If you do that, then you can always just come back in, push it back up, mm -hmm. uh, like you do this thing upside down. And just come in with a sponge and kind of push that clay back down. So you can still change that shape quite a bit, um, as long as it's still a little bit wet. So don't stress it if the... How do you get that pump in there to not explode when you fire it? I do put a little hole in it. Um, apparently, if you go slow enough, you will not explode it. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I had a workshop with uh, Val Cushing up at Cal U. Uh, were you up at that one? Yeah, I was. I think he's. I think he talked about that there. I don't remember, but, uh, but I think he says as long as you just as long as you don't go too quick through yeah. uh, the ramping, then it it won't blow up. So. But it could be just a little bit delirious. After all, it is Val, and he's kind of king. So, <laughs> but let's see if we can get this thing off the wheel and smooth out the foot a little bit. Yeah, years ago when I was real young, I saw these bell cushion big jars where they kind of almost collapsed in on themselves, like had a teardrop kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, and I went up to him and I said, uh, did you think of like stop action drops? You know, when you did, I, I had this like real long explanation. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he gave no explanation. He just said. <laughs> uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually really soft right now. Um, so I'm just going to basically smooth out the bottom and trim off a little bit on the foot so it's basically just a untrimmed bottom. Very similar to what I do on my mugs. I'm not quite sure if this will be able to... Hmm. Might have to let it dry upside down for a while. <laughs> for those of you that fired with gas, our, our green glaze and our blue glaze and our taffy glaze, those are all about cushion glaze. That VC green, VC blue, and about cushion. Probably one of the most influential potters, American oh, potters, no doubt. ever. Right, no doubt. Uh, especially considering the amount of potters he turned through, yeah. Alfred and right. 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 I don't know yeah. that Volkus was quite the uh, educator. No. He was just he was. more of a character, I right. guess. He was. <laughs> Slash drug addict. He <laughs> was pretty cool, though. I, I went to a workshop. I had enough wedging clay for him at a workshop in Pittsburgh. There were a lot of uh, old lady potters there who were taking classes from the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts. And he just put these big blocks of clay and he just like, put his fist down there and pull it out <laughs> a little bit and cut that off. I mean, he did about 20 of these real fast. And finally this one lady said, are you centering those? And he said, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was his ice bucket. That's when he was making the oh, yeah. series. Okay? Yeah. And he, he called them ice buckets. They're just these like huge, thick things of clay, and they're just like kind of a hole in them. Just real fast, he just ripped them off real fast. <laughs> and, uh, ice box. <laughs> Give me the character. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm just trying to get it so at the bottom. The nice thing about these pots is when that foot goes down and in a little bit more, uh, just because it gives us. It looks like a, I don't even know what I would consider it. It kind of looks like a beanbag chair sitting on the floor with a little mm -hmm. foot underneath. 
but apparently they used to be used for um, medicine, uh, at least in the Greek culture. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah, they used to be used for uh, uh, like um, bombs. I think it's bombs. I could be wrong, uh, but. I don't know if that was just because they were so wide, or mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. So where did you uh, get your taste for your cla these classical forms? Was it when you went to China, or? or um, I have no idea. Um, actually, I'd, I'd be, I bet it was an art history class. Mm -hmm. It was probably an art history class in uh, undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, just, just love them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. any most forms that are made are still <coughs> have roots to all these pots right. that are thousands of years old. Right. Um, I think that's why everybody's going to slip casting because then you don't have to worry. You're not constricted to mm -hmm. round or whatever else. Do you want that under the hair? No, I think I'll be okay. okay. Right. Let me check on. That.